Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're diving into Scratch 3.0 to build an interactive scrolling flying game. A bit like an endless flyer, where our character navigates through obstacles and collects points. This is a great project for learning how to manage multiple sprites and create the illusion of continuous movement. First, let's get our digital canvas ready. We start, as always, with the Scratch Editor open. We'll immediately focus on the backdrop. The current white stage is too plain for a flying game. Let's head to the backdrop selector in the bottom right corner. Choose one that fits our theme, like Blue Sky 2. This instantly sets the mood for our high-flying adventure. Next, our player character. We need to say goodbye to the default Scratch Cat. We'll delete it and add a sprite that's ready to soar. I'm selecting the Cat Flying sprite. Before we write any code, let's establish our starting conditions. We drag the essential win green flag clicked event block onto the coding area. Immediately after, we use the go to x y block to place our cat character securely on the left side of the stage. Setting the coordinates to something like x negative 164 and y 116 positions our cat clearly and prepares it for the first action. For a nice touch, let's add a say hello for two seconds block from the looks menu, a friendly greeting to kick off every game session. Now for the fun part, giving the player full control. Since our cat is a free-flying avatar, we want it to be able to move in all four directions. We'll utilize the events category and the different arrow keys to make this happen. Let's start with vertical movement, which is controlled by the Y axis. We pull out the win up arrow key pressed block. This is our trigger. The action itself comes from the motion category, change Y by 10. A positive value increases the Y coordinate, sending the cat upward. To program the downward movement, we don't need to rebuild the code. We can save time by right-clicking and duplicating the existing block. Then we simply change the key to the down arrow and crucially change the value to a negative number. Change Y by negative 10. This ensures the cat descends smoothly. We follow the exact same method for horizontal movement, which is governed by the X axis. We duplicate one of the movement blocks again. For the right arrow, we use change X by 10 to move the cat forward across the stage. Finally, the left arrow movement is achieved by setting the value to a negative number, change X by negative 10. Take a moment now to test all four controls, up, down, left, and right, to ensure our flying character is perfectly maneuverable. Smooth controls are vital for an enjoyable game experience. The secret to any side-scrolling or flying game lies in the background movement. Instead of trying to move the whole stage, we make the obstacles move towards the player, which creates the illusion of flight. This technique is often called parallax scrolling. We start by introducing our main obstacle, the Bilbins sprite. We add it to the stage and manually position it so the base sits nicely on the horizon. Now let's program its movement. Using the win green flag clicked event block for the building sprite, we set up a loop that will continuously move the building across the screen. We start the building off screen to the far right using set X to 252, then we introduce a repeat loop. Inside this loop, the critical command is change X by negative 10. A negative change in the X axis moves the sprite left. The repeat count, like 30 times, dictates how many steps the building takes before it resets. After the loop completes, we simply jump the building back to its starting position with the set X to 252 block, effectively creating an endless appearance of new buildings. A professional touch here is to add next costume from the looks menu inside the loop. The building sprite has multiple looks, and this ensures a different tower appears each time, preventing visual repetition. 
To add more visual depth, let's bring in the Clouds sprite. We apply the same scrolling logic, ensuring that the cloud sprite starts off screen and moves left using a repeat loop and a negative X change. We can adjust the scrolling speed here. Maybe the clouds move slightly slower or have a different repeat count to simulate distance from the player. This contrast between the moving buildings and the moving clouds is what makes the scrolling effect feel convincing. A game isn't a game without a goal. Our goal will be collecting points, represented by the heart purple sprite. Let's add the heart to the stage. Before we code the heart's behavior, we need a way to track the player's success. We go to the variables category and click make a variable. It's always best practice to rename variables clearly, so we'll call ours point. This score counter automatically appears on the stage. Now back to the hearts code. On when green flag clicked, our absolute first priority is using set point to zero. We must reset the score every time the game starts. We also need to set the hearts spawning location. We use a combination of go to random position to pick a random height and then constrain its horizontal spawn point by changing the X coordinate to 240. This ensures the heart always appears on the far right edge of the screen, just like our buildings, ready to scroll across. We also make sure the heart is visible with the show block. Our final piece of code brings the whole experience together, the heart's life cycle and the scoring. The heart needs to fall down the screen, simulating gravity, and it needs to register a point if it's collected. We use a repeat until loop from the control category. The condition for the loop to stop is found in sensing, touching cat flying. Inside this loop, we put the falling action, change Y by negative 20. The heart will continually fall until it either hits the bottom of the screen, which you could add code to handle, or is collected by the cat. Once the loop ends, we know a collision has occurred. We use an if-then block to check the collision one last time, though in this case, the repeat until is strong evidence. Inside the if block, we perform two crucial actions. First, change point by one to update the score, and second, we use the hide block to make the collected heart instantly disappear from the screen. Once hidden, the heart's code then cycles back to the start, the initial X and random Y position, to reappear on the far right, beginning its next journey across the screen. And with that final piece of code, we have a complete, fully functional scrolling flying game. The cat flies, the buildings and clouds scroll, and collecting the heart increases the score. Take a moment to hit the green flag and enjoy your creation. Feel free to expand on this, add sound effects, implement a game over condition if the cat touches a building, or introduce new obstacles. Thanks for coding with me today.